Welcome everyone to the Meadows Museum of Art. My name is Alyssa Klaus and I'm the director here. If you are a centenary student and you need passport points, just be sure to sign in at the front desk with your student email. Our speaker for tonight is Emma Foster, who will be discussing Objectified, which is her very first solo exhibition. Emma is a centenary sophomore, originally from Houghton, Louisiana. I got to know Emma last year when she completed an internship in the Meadows, working with some of our permanent collection items, and I am so happy to have had her back in the museum this semester to exhibit some of her own work in our project space gallery, which rotates every month. Emma's work typically focuses on how people think and feel, and she particularly enjoys drawing portraits. She primarily works in pencil and occasionally works in other mediums such as charcoal or collage. Objectified will be up through the end of next week, and, or at the end of this week, excuse me, and then the next installation that will be opening will be on Tuesday, featuring hand embroidered works by Texas artist Candace Hicks. So please join me in welcoming Emma. Hi. Uh, my name is Emma, as you all just heard. And uh, my exhibition is Objectified. It's my first one. And this is also my first artist talk, so if it's crap, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what to talk about at first. I've gone to some of the other artist talks over the past like two weeks, and a bunch of them were like actual older people who had a life and everything that they could talk about, which I don't have. So I'm going to just sit here and talk about how I came up with the idea for Objectify, because I think that's probably the most interesting thing that I have to talk about at the moment. So the thing about Objectify is it's my first ever like series of drawings that I've done that were like thematically and visually connected. Usually when I draw, I'm very intuitive. It's just for practice or it's just for fun. I don't really draw that much with intention behind it, so this was my first time ever doing that. So that was a bit difficult. It was fun because I liked doing the drawings, but it was definitely difficult to kind of wrap my head around like a bigger picture. And one of the things that was the most difficult was actually kind of putting some meaning behind it. When it comes to art, I'm a very visual person. I think more about what it's gonna look like or what the final product is gonna be. I don't think that much about like, well, what's the meaning or what's the story? I'm not very good at that. It's not something I do very often which was surprisingly difficult with this one. I had gotten through like three drawings before I finished, figured out what I wanted to like say with the piece. So when I was asked to do the artist statement, I got a bit nervous because I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna say or like the actual words I'm gonna use, like what is it I'm trying to say? Like I have in my head how it like makes me feel or like things it reminds me of, but I don't know how to like verbalize it or articulate it. So that was definitely a challenge that I had with this exhibition. So I knew in my head like what it was gonna look like or what I wanted the finished product to look like. And I had three, three and a half drawings that I had done at that point. And when I was writing it, I was like, what do I wanna say? What, is, what does it remind me of? Like what are the feelings I have when I look at these or when I think of the end product, what does that make me think of? Or what does it remind me of? And that's when I got the idea of like objectified like as a concept. It reminded me a lot of social media was the first thing that popped in my head, which was weird because visually, like, being drawings on paper and it just being the back of people's heads, it didn't really remind me immediately of social media. That took me a little bit to get to that conclusion. But the more I thought about it, the more I was like, it kind of reminds me of this. It reminds me of how, like, all the faces are turned away. Like, they look like mannequins or dolls. You can't really, like, feel anything like human emotion with them because they look very stiff and awkward. But they still have like a lot of conventionally attractive features like pretty hair, or nice clothes. And I was like, that kind of reminds me a lot of like, whenever you scroll through social media, there's all these like, you see these beautiful people of all, like all these different types of beautiful people, but it's like they all kind of serve this similar purpose of trying to like sell something. And it feels like it's like, like you objectively, you're, you're beautiful, but there's this like hollow feeling that comes from it because you get this kind of like commodification of people and it's kind of a, a weird, like a funky feeling and I didn't like that. And that feeling kind of reminded me of how I felt when I thought about my series of drawings that I had done and what I wanted to do. 
And I don't know if it kind of comes across that much when you look at it, like visually, I don't think it's super obvious, which I kind of like, it's a bit of a subtle thing. You have to like, I think, read the artist statement to kind of get that that's what it's referring to. And at first I didn't know if I liked that. I was like, eh, I feel like I'm not being obvious enough. I feel like it's not clear what I'm trying to connect this with. But uh, the day that the museum opened, um, I was in my exhibition and the lighting was really nice and I didn't have any pictures of any of my drawings yet. So I was trying to take some pictures with my phone and this guy walked in there and he was just, I don't think he knew that I was the one that drew it. He walked in and he was like, this is creepy. And I was like, yeah, it kind of is, yeah. And he left and I was like, at first I was like flabbergasted because I was such a blunt wife putting it. But at the same time I was like, you know what? I kind of I kind of vibe with that answer. I really like it. Like I wanted it to be eerie and he kind of caught on to that. So thank you random man for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's the main thing. Like if the only thing you can, you can really take away from it is like, like a weird feeling or you feel uncomfortable looking at it, even if you don't make connections to like, social media or like the commodification of people or anything like that, if you can look at it and be like, it makes you uncomfortable, then I think that's good enough for me. Cause that's kind of what I wanted. That's how I felt when I was thinking of the idea. But yeah, any other things about it? It's, it's done in graphite just cause that's what I use all the time. I was already doing kind of a new thing with doing a series of drawings. So I didn't want to like do something even more unfamiliar by working with like a medium that I'm not comfortable with. So in that aspect, it's not very experimental at all. But uh, yeah, it was really fun. Um, any questions? Yes? Okay, so I think it's really interesting how unsexualized your figures are. Mm -hmm. And the fact that like the body part you chose to portray they're not full body portraits, or they're not I mean, their face, or like maybe it's chest revolution, and mm -hmm. it kind of creates this role reversal in a way of like mm -hmm. you feeling threatened instead of these figures. And mm -hmm. what was your thinking into that? Was like that what you were going for? Um, I didn't really want it to be sexual. I didn't really like. I want you to feel more creeped out about it, like in an eerie way. I feel like if it was sexual, it kind of makes you feel kind of disgusted, and I really. I didn't want to add that element of that because I just it makes me uncomfortable when I think about how people can be viewed in that way, and I didn't want that kind of discomfort to come across in my show. I wanted it to be more of like eerie and more of like a still thing, less of an enraging thing. That's a nice observation, though. Anybody else? Yeah. Do you have any references for the people? Yeah. So what I did is I would go on Google and I would just look up like basic like figure references and then I just would screenshot and I had like one picture that I used for all of it and then for like different clothes or hair I would just look up the type of hair that I wanted to draw and then for clothes I would just go on like Amazon or whatever and look up different types of clothes so that way I wouldn't draw like the same thing over and over again but just various pictures from Google is pretty much it. So um, I liked the idea of doing, I really like art when it's like, like this, when it's in a frame, but I don't think that would have just taken a lot of effort and that's just not, at the end of the day, that's just not what I think would have looked best for that. And I think it would have made it look too, I don't know, in a weird way, I think it would have made it look too polished to do that. And I didn't necessarily want that either. I wanted the characters or the figures to look very like stiff and put together and very mannequin-like and I feel like I wanted the rest of it to not look that way. I wanted it to look very juxtaposed. So I liked the idea of it being pinned to the wall and being very minimal. That's, another, that's also why uh, when it's cut, if you look at the paper, it's very jagged and it's not cut in a really nice way. But it, it was kind of intentional because I wanted it to just really emphasize on how like stiff and posed the figures are, and I didn't want the, the framework by which you look into it to be like that, too. I wanted it to be very different. I wanted it to feel awkward. Yes? I'm sorry. I'm, like, literally popping in and out. <laughs> but I really like your work. There's a freaking quiet elements that just, like, stunts and arrest the, 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 the lookers of whoever's looking at your art, mm -hmm. in particular for a woman of color, what I'm interested in or what 
struck me is to see a reflection of people who look like me in your art. Mm -hmm. um, I find this particularly brave of you. Um, and I was wondering what, now we can talk about the brave needs, right? <laughs> but I think you could have decided to, to stick with what is familiar to you. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious to find out why did you, where does that side of you, like, I'm just gonna like try that and you do it so freaking well. Oh my gosh, I want, I want one of your work to hang on my wall. So we need to negotiate how I do that. I would work for you for free. Um, <laughs> they they are already priced. They are already priced. Okay, they're already priced. I need my photo. Like with there being like different types of people, different from me? Yes. I think it's just, well, the entire show, it's about like how people can have these superficial differences, but especially through the lens of social media, but they're all kind of selling the same thing. And I don't think it would be, I was kind of going off of what I'll see on social media. And I don't just see like white people. There's different types of people. And those can just, if, for lack of a better way of saying it, that can be part of like another superficial difference. In a way, they're all selling the same thing. They're all being kind of dehumanized or objectified in the same way. And I just wanted to accurately reflect what I, what I felt like I was seeing, and that wasn't just white people. Can you talk to Google Images? I'm sorry? Can you talk to Google Images? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can. <laughs> yeah, so, whenever, so in order for me to find people of color, I need to put black or brown. Yeah, exactly. The is whiteness, and so, I'm yeah. glad that you, you subvert the mm -hmm. dominant narrative and say, no, that's not what I see. This is mm -hmm. what is a more, a more accurate invention. Well, whenever I would have to, like, whenever I was looking up, especially for references, because, like, hair is a big thing. This is hair and clothes is how I'm differentiating all of them. And whenever I would have to look up hair, like, curlier hair or African hair, it's something you have to specifically look up, especially when it was like, I wanted to do something that was curly hair and something that was African hair. And it was like, you have to really specify, because it's not the first thing that pops up yeah, at all. That was a great insight, though. Thank you. Thank you. I really like that question. All right, anybody else? Yes? Um, I was just thinking about the contrast between your exhibit and the exhibit here. And like a couple of things like really stood out to me. I don't really got the eeriness of your exhibit really made sense whenever I was thinking about this. And here, all of the portraits are people facing you, and they're returning the gaze of you. Back, or they're returning their gaze to you, and that's kind of a way that we kind of create humans and humanity is like looking at each other in the face. And in your work, it like subverts that. You literally cannot have that gaze return to you, so it's literally the way you set it up. In one sense, it's impossible for not to, for you not to encounter that like objectness mm -hmm. that you know, person. So I just thought that was. A really neat juxtaposition here between the two that your work brings out. Thank you. Yeah, I really, I really didn't want people to be able to make it. You can assume what they feel, or you can assume what they think, or you can assume what their faces are like, but you can't know, and you're not supposed to. Like, I wanted to feel almost like, like a faceless mannequin wearing a wig. Like that's almost what I wanted to feel like. Like they're, sh because when people are objectified in that way. They have a face, and you can you do often assume what they feel, but you don't know. They are kind of, in a way, kind of empty, like a mannequin, and that's what I wanted that to feel like. I didn't want it to be like, oh, there's a smile. It can mean this, because you can, you can try and do that in a good way, where it has like an emotion on it, and you want it to be kind of like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like contrary, like there's a smile, but it means this, and I didn't want, but that can be misread, and I didn't want that. I wanted it to be very clear that. You're not supposed to see anything there. There's not supposed to be like if you're not you, you're not supposed to see it as a person. Thank you for the comment. 
Yes? So, when you were uh, creating this, did you know that it was going to be in here? Uh, yeah, I had been talking to Shay about, like, in the first semester of my freshman year, he mentioned the idea of doing this. So when, when I went into this, I didn't know what the final idea was going to be, but when I started making, like, sketches, I knew it was going to be in the museum. So, um, with that, how did you deal with, like, Yeah, there's there's a lot of nervousness because it was just it was so n new. Because I'm like, you know, sometimes you, you draw something that looks great, and sometimes you draw something that looks like crap. So there was definitely, but I was like, oh, no, I have like a finite amount of time, and I'm busy, and I don't know if I'm going to do well at this at all. And I just the only thing, uh, the only way I dealt with it is just like trying not to think about it and just. Like on the technical aspect of it, like if I was working on drawing, I was like, take your time, don't rush yourself, like just try your best. If you make a mistake, that's fine, but just try your best to avoid it. If you overthink it, you're more likely to mess up. So I don't think I have any like solid advice in that regard. But uh, yeah, it was it was a little bit nerve wracking because I'll just get into my head and I'll just feel like put in your earbuds, turn music up really loud, and don't think. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Anybody else? <clears throat> yeah. What advice would you give to other students who want to have a show at the museum? Um, if your professor suggests it, do it. Because <laughs> they're right, it's fun to do. But uh, if you want to, you could talk to Miss Alyssa, or you could talk to, like, if you're like an art student, I talk to Shay. But, uh, yeah, don't, don't be too nervous. I mean, I was nervous, but don't be too nervous. It's really fun, and it's just a fun thing to do. And even if museums aren't really your thing, like, just take a chance. It's fun. It's a fun way to spend your time, and you may find you learn something new. Like, I didn't really like the idea of doing series of drawings or, like, putting a lot of meaning behind that wasn't really my thing. But I think it's, it's definitely, doing this has definitely shown me that that's a really fun aspect of art that I really hadn't gotten into, and I think it made me kind of, like, appreciate my art a little bit more, and uh, you can really surprise yourself if you put a lot of time and work into something and there's a purpose behind it. So even if you plan on only doing it once and you don't want to do it again, just on the technical side, it can really help you like feel closer with your art and just feel like you're, like understand more about why you're doing what you're doing and things that you like and that you don't like. Also, it can give you a good idea of like, if you want to like, if you like to draw for fun or you want to make a career out of it but you don't know what to do, if you want to decide, like, are museums things that I want to do? Do I think that would be, like, a thing for me? It's, like, a good baby step to see if that's something you'd want to do in the future. So, like, practically, it's just a smart decision. <laughs> <laughs> and you can start fresh from here, right? Yeah, like yeah. Me. Yeah, yeah uh, the other person, another student who did uh, a show, an exhibition, was uh, Rihanna, and she did that for freshman year, so... Yeah, you can tell you if you're a freshman or sophomore, whatever, totally just give it a shot. Yep. Um, has preparing for the show and sort of thinking about the meaning and purpose behind your work as you develop the exhibition changed the way that you go into creating new pieces yet? Or I've been, honestly, I haven't made too many new pieces yet that aren't for his class. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I haven't made anything yet, but it's definitely made me a lot more excited about doing new pieces. I definitely want to, like, actually, as I've been working on his class, I've been thinking of different, like, things where I was like, ooh, I could do a, another series. I could do, like, 10 drawings that are like this, or, like, 10 paintings that are like this, and I could have this whole story behind it, because that's just not something I did before. And I'm like, that'd be such a fun thing to do, because now I've kind of done that before. So, yeah, I think it has, like, definitely, it helps me come up with more ideas for things, because I think I was getting a little bit stagnant in terms of my art. I was kind of doing a lot of the same things, mostly just practicing like on a technical level. So it's definitely made me excited to do more projects, even if it's just things that I'm going to like keep in a portfolio in my room. But yeah, it definitely has changed uh, or like affected my new ideas. Thank you for the question.